A thin layer of water ice would melt quickly, but a thick layer of frozen carbon dioxide, dry ice, could last indefinitely. The amount of carbon dioxide that could condense during that polar winter is a yard or two in thickness. Now, that's a good sizable thickness, and it's going to take a while for that to re-evaporate. Mm -hmm. To us, that's a much more acceptable, imaginable view than that it's that little tiny thin layer of water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, both channels operated, and so for the first time we got a look at the uh, channel one. <laughs> it's a little difficult recovering from all of that, you know. The best part was riding home last night with the data in our lap when we saw Mars. Yeah, we saw Mars at the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go to Berkeley. Yeah. Dr. Pimentel walks out of JPL with his data. The only measurements near the surface that could show organic compounds, those possibly made by life. We'll be back tomorrow at five. And the most sophisticated measurements for confirming or ruling out the existence of water. Wednesday, August 5th. The scientists meet to discuss their findings among themselves before they reveal them to the press. Dr. Pimentel is in Berkeley, California, but joins the meeting through a two-way speakerphone in the ceiling. I'm curious, was that a hint that you think you're seeing something organic? Oh, yeah. You think you are? Did you say you're curious or furious? Curious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, well, sure, that's, that's our optimistic hope right now. <laughs> what are the wavelengths of your organic bands? Uh... You'll see tomorrow, Don. <laughs> you don't want to tell us now. Right. I can say you, you can just picture the planet teeming with life. That's supposed to be a joke. Yeah, I, I know. <laughs> with the press conference an hour away, Pimentel and his associate, Dr. Kenneth Herr, arrive at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. If Pimentel's results do indicate water ice, organic matter or other signs conducive to life on Mars, then he will directly oppose the other Mariner scientists. Four years ago... One by one, the experimenters announced the results of the flight. Dr. Layton's picture experimenters got back a fantastic 200 pictures of the planet. ...of that planet at a resolution that would... In the distance pictures, the experimenters saw the light and dark patterns on Mars with unprecedented clarity. But nearer the distinctions began to fade, and close up, the demarcations dissolved into other patterns, craters, some white rim, <laughs> the snow, and mysterious plains and mountains. But one vast stretch of over 1,200 miles showed almost no craters, as if smoothly sandpapered by erosion or possibly covered by a fine wind-blown dust. Another area that breaks the pattern of craters is a several hundred thousand square mile section with a chaotic jumbled look, as if the surface had slumped from beneath. The only identifiable cloud appeared to be a very thin streak hanging 20 to 30 miles off the edge of the planet. Dr. Gary Neugebauer reports an ice cap temperature very similar to that of dry ice. Dr. Charles Barth's findings include life-killing radiation that bombards the planet. At the press conference, George Pimentel is the last to speak. We were up, Dr. Herr and I, uh, almost all night last night with our computer trying to analyze our data. And I'm sure the other experimenters were too. And we've had no opportunity to try to interlock uh, the results. And I'm telling you the results as our instrument indicates. And insofar as uh, we may later proved to have to retract something or not. That's the nature of science. I'm telling you what our data indicate. We are confident 
that we have detected gaseous methane and gaseous ammonia on Mars. We are confident that we have detected solid carbon dioxide that is not on the surface. That is, it's suspended as a cloud above the polar cap. Our data are consistent with and suggest that the polar cap is composed of water ice and probably not solid CO2. Certainly not solid CO2 near the polar cap edge. In the region near the edge of the polar cap, Polar ice provides a reservoir of water. The solid carbon dioxide cloud provides protection from ultraviolet radiation. The geographic localization of the absorptions suggests that their origin is in this hospitable region, a region certainly deserving further exploration. Thank you, George. I think you can all see why science is fun. <laughs> the investigators reported their first evaluations under the pressures of time and fatigue. Dr. Neugebauer's measurement of the ice cap temperature may turn out to be slightly above the frost point of carbon dioxide. Later refined data by Dr. Barth indicates an upper atmosphere of mostly carbon dioxide with possibly a few percent of nitrogen. Just what Earth's atmosphere would be without oceans. And Dr. Pimentel withdrew his original findings of methane and ammonia, which could have been life-supporting indications, but maintained his position that Mars has a partially water ice cap that is protected by a cloud of carbon dioxide. Curiosity, excitement, reaching and sometimes overreaching. These are characteristics of man that gives science a human nature. That's all right, but don't ask me about life on Mars, okay? I can't, I can't feel that any person with any soul can look out on that universe that surrounds us and can imagine the immensity of it and the history of it without being rather impressed with the idea that we as little atoms made of the same stuff those stars are made of have the capability to regard the other part of the universe one piece of the universe has the ability to look at another part of the universe and wonder about it that's a very amazing thing and it brings into one's mind all kinds of thoughts about religion and philosophy and so on okay so long Look. long winded WKCBS, WKCBS or something. Here we found some good pictures. So you, uh, you I think that's nice. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Okay. Uh, and then the one that goes with it. Yes, yeah, there's one. And then the footprint, but I. Yeah. I